Hi guys and welcome to the August edition of Simply Scuba Live. <clears throat> welcome guys. Uh, first off, sorry for last month. Um, the pre-recorded uh, Simply Scuba Live wasn't quite live because it was pre-recorded. Uh, I was in the middle of the Red Sea on, uh, on Blue Horizon um, and there wasn't very good Wi-Fi so I couldn't do a live broadcast. So we had to pre-record it beforehand. Um, hopefully there was a few interesting stuff. I did manage to answer a few people's questions, uh, but it, it wasn't live. Um, so yeah, welcome to August. Uh, August, the weather seems to be turning now, so the diving season is going to start to change. Uh, I actually like this time of year because this is when the sun starts to go in, the algae starts to drop down, and the water tends to be a bit uh, clearer in the UK. So, uh, so I actually prefer diving this time of year. Uh, the water is still a bit warm, um, and um, yeah, you, you still get some decent viz. And, uh, and all the people who don't like cold water, they don't go diving. So the dive sites tend to be nice and, um, nice and open, nice and free. Uh, so first off, let's have a look at the news. Uh, bear with me. <coughs> so that one. OK, so the August news. So August's, um, August has been quite an interesting month. Um, quite a few things have happened. Uh, I've just taken a, uh, a quick snippet of, uh, of a few sort of interesting stories. Uh, the first one is, uh, is more about myself, uh, really. Uh, I went to Scuba Fest uh, the weekend before last. Now, uh, now this is a, um, it's a yearly thing. Uh, it happens in either Cornwall or Anglesey. This year it was in Anglesey. And, um, and it's just a really great way for any diver to come go diving in the UK. Um, it's aimed at really anybody um, from beginners to experienced divers just to get them diving. Uh, a lot of people, I mean, I know even with myself, so many weekends go by and I just, uh, I haven't thought about going diving. But this, it really sort of wakes people up and sort of all brings them together. A lot of the manufacturers come. Um, Atomic was there, Maris was there, Apex Aqualung were there. Um, Weasel UK were there, um, just bringing their equipment just so that you can actually try it out in the water. You can have a look at their new equipment and, uh, and just kind of get advice as well. Uh, it's very, very easy shore diving. So uh, you can see a few guys uh, on the right-hand side of your screen just, um, just going in off the beach. And they also have that marvelous rib uh, that run you backwards and forwards to different dive sites, either uh, sort of sunken wrecks or, uh, or nice reefs. Uh, so Scuba Fest is really nice. It's uh, it's really cheap, and uh, and it's just a nice place to meet people uh, and actually meet the brands that you're uh, that you're using. So it's once a year. Um, this one's already gone. So uh, so have a look at Scuba Fest uh, for next year. Uh, it is it's really good fun. I uh, I really encourage you guys to go. Uh, I already stepped on it. It's uh, Blue O2. <clears throat> uh, Simply Scuba have started doing business with Blue O2. Uh, which most of you should know, but um, they're a tour guide operator all over the world. Um, Egypt, um, Egypt, Fiji, uh, Micronesia, you name it, they have, um, they have sort of liverboards all over the world. And they're a really high class organization. Uh, I spent a week on Blue Horizon um, a few weeks ago, and we did uh, Simply the Best which is a mix of Daedalus, Elphinstone, the Brothers, uh, and a few other dive sites. And it was an incredible trip. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Uh, you can see a few of my videos on YouTube. We've just done some snippet videos. Um, very, very nice uh, liveaboard. Very, very well organized. And with us, if you um, click the link below in the description, uh, there should be one down there somewhere, you're going to get a 50 pound gift card when you book your holiday sort of through us through Blue O2. Um, so if you mention us when you go to book your Blue O2 holiday, you'll get a £50 Simply Scuba gift card uh, and you can spend that on our online store or in store with us. Really, really nice company. Um, yeah, go have a look at them. They are top notch. Uh, quick bit of news is um, it's not groundbreaking, but I just think it's really interesting. The, um, the John V. Moran was found in, uh, in Lake Michigan. A uh, bit of background, the uh, John V. Moran sunk in 1899. It was a sort of, it was almost a, a ferry ship that ferried cargo and people backwards and forwards over Lake Michigan. And uh, until one day it was caught in pack ice. Uh, 
and along the starboard side, some of the ice actually punctured the uh, the iron uh, reinforced hull, and the uh, the crew had plenty of time to decide whether to stay where they are, stuck in the ice, wait for rescue, or get out and sort of walk um, to either rescue or to shore on top of the ice. They chose the latter uh, to actually walk off, and uh, and they survived. But the uh, John V. Moran sank. It's recently been found. Uh, it's, it's about 110, 111 meters down. Uh, so it's a long way down, but it is one of the most well-preserved wrecks um, I think I or anybody has ever seen. Uh, there are some great um, sort of video shots of it um, done by an ROV pilot by the Michigan State Police. Uh, you can see one of the um, just kind of screen grabs on the right-hand side. and. Everything is sort of perfectly in place. Uh, it seems to be perfectly vertical in the water, uh, and they're going to be sending tech divers to go down, inspect it, and just sort of confirm that it definitely is the John V. Moran. It looks like a carbon copy, um, but it's just incredible. Uh, the Great Lakes out in um, in America and sort of <clears throat> the um, oh, what do you call it, Canadian border. Um, they, they are home to a lot of lakes, uh, a lot of lakes, of course they are, they are, uh, a lot of shipwrecks out there, and, um, and there is a lot of diving out there. So if you are out in the States, uh, around the lakes, go diving. Uh, if you like the, um, the wrecks, a lot of them are quite deep, so um, yeah, you need to be qualified, but, um, but yeah, because they're, they're, uh, they're not sort of uh, salt water, there's no currents, there's no tides, a lot of it is very, very well preserved. Uh, the next one is some sad news. Uh, there's a bit of sad news in this uh, in this news today. Um, we've had some losses in the um, in the sort of diving world. Uh, the first one I'm going to mention is world record free diver Natalia uh, Molchanova. She um, herself she holds 41 world records for apnea and free diving. She, um, uh, she she's a a wonderful wonderful lady. And she was uh, she was training a group of uh, of free divers when she um, when she descended without fins as she's done thousands of times and uh, and she never uh, she never surfaced again. Um, they have searched, but they've called off the search, and um, so they've sort of pronounced her dead. Um, very very sad. And also a, um, a doctor, his nickname is Doctor Deep, is uh, Doctor Guy Garman. He, um, about a week after Natalia died, he died during a, uh, a world record deep dive attempt. Uh, he's trying to beat um, oh, uh, Ahmed Gaba's attempt, uh, which is below 300 meters. He, uh, he descended down his line. Uh, you can see him here descending down, but, um, but he failed to, um, to meet up with the first stop and the first group of safety divers uh, on his ascent. Um, they still haven't found. Uh, they still haven't found him, so they pronounced him dead as well. Very, very sad. Uh, it's sad to see them go. Uh, another piece of news. We've um, this has been going on for a little while. It's it's been going on in the background. Uh, it's quite a tragic story. A uh, a Biza instructor. He was diving in a group um, in Malta in July last year, when um, sadly his his partner and buddy suddenly descended without notice um, and went down at the end of the dive from 15 meters down below 30. And um, uh, two other divers went to rescue her. When they all surfaced, um, she, uh, she was pronounced dead on the scene by a, uh, a local doctor who tried to help. And one of the rescuers actually died from um, uh, pulmonary edema. Both deaths were um, were ruled as accidents, but um, by an independent um, inquiry. But now the Maltese authorities are trying to extradite this uh, Bizak instructor under claims that he was at fault uh, for negligence. So um, so he's appealing against that. Bizak have very very generously. Um, they're not liable in any way. Um, but they've decided to pledge a hundred thousand pounds towards his legal fees, um, just to help him out. Um, their Bizak are sort of club orientated. They're very, very um, 
they want to look after all of their members and try and do whatever they can uh, to try and help out. So, um, uh, I mean, we were looking at sort of other ways of funding. If the uh, if the court costs go over the hundred thousand pounds, maybe someone could set up some kind of, um, sort of extra fund where divers around the world can pledge a bit of money just to help him out. Um, it's a really, really sad case. Uh, if you uh, if you want to look it up, it's uh, Stephen Martin. Uh, you'll see it in the news. Uh, Bzac earlier on this week, a couple of days ago, they find the, they released an official notice saying that they were going to help him out. Um, but yeah, it, uh, we're just trying to raise awareness of this and just try and um, sort of help him out. Uh, on some happier news, uh, the Duchess of Cambridge has gained her Paddy Advanced Open Water. Uh, most of you will probably already know that the uh, the Duke of Cambridge, her uh, her other half, is um, has become the present uh, president of the uh, the Bezac, and um, so scuba diving is sort of getting big into the royal family. Um, so she's uh, she did her uh, her Paddy Advanced Open Water in uh, Mustique which is a, uh, an island in the Caribbean chain. It's uh, just south of sort of Dominica. And um, so this is getting quite interesting. Hopefully we can gaze a bit, uh, gain a bit more awareness for the um, sort of diving industry. Um, yeah, because she's, yeah, she's a great role model. So hopefully a lot of people will see, oh, Duchess of Cambridge learning how to scuba dive. That's interesting. And they try and get into it. Um, yeah, it's, it's always good news when something like this happens. Uh, another bit of good news is uh, UPS has banned shark fin shipments. Uh, they tweeted back in uh, back on the 19th that UPS has banned shark fin shipments following a consultation with the WWF. Uh, this is a huge step forwards, uh, and now there's more and more pressure on other um, so courier companies. And this is really to stop the trade of shark fins and stop the uh, promotion of shark finning all around the world. It's uh, it's causing a huge amount of damage. Um, so now there's a lot more pressure on other couriers to, um, to stop um, sort of aiding this trade. Uh, on to new um, sort of interesting uh, sort of products that we're getting in. Uh, the first one is a new phone cover, uh, which I think is quite cool. It's, uh, it's from Paddy, and it's got a, a tribal hammerhead shark design on a uh, clear background. Um, right now, it's only for the iPhone 6, 6 Plus, and the Galaxy S5 and S6. Very, very smart. Uh, you can find it on our website. The link will be uh, below in the description. And uh, this is just a really sort of smart design, and it tells people that you're scuba divers and that you're, uh, you're passionate about the, um, the environment. Uh, next piece of kit are two fourth element towels. Uh, they actually come in two sizes. The first one uh, on the right hand side is the wetsuit towel, which is just standard bath towel sort of size. The second one they've decided, they've realized that there are wetsuit divers and dry suit divers out there. Wetsuit divers need a lot of towel because you come out of the water completely wet, whereas dry suit divers, it's only your hands and your head that's wet. So they decided to make a smaller sort of hand towel sized towel um, for dry suit divers because you don't need a big, big um, towel after a dive. Um, the material itself, it's all environmentally friendly. Um, fourth Element are on a really big um, sort of environmental cause kick right now. A lot of their materials are being recycled and they're using uh, sort of specialist materials. Um, their ocean positive gear is um, is coming from recycled ghost gear. So all the old discarded fishing nets are being collected by technical divers. They're bringing it back, cleaning it up, re-spinning it, and then spinning it into clothes. Um, so that's really good. And this material is um, it's, it's really nice. They're very high quality towels. They're, uh, they're a very useful um, accessory to your dive box. Uh, they're also bringing out, this was announced about a day or so ago, uh, the fourth element Nord fleece. Now this is using a, uh, a Polartec Thermal Pro grid. Now uh, Polartec are a great company. They uh, they actually started off making military thermal gear, and um, it's very very it's very weatherproof. So you can wear this in and around the dive site. 
even if it drizzles, typical British weather, uh, you get a bit of rain, uh, it's still going to keep you warm and comfortable. The, uh, the material is, uh, is uh, oh, I'm trying to think of the word, almost wicking, so um, some moisture and it's very breathable, keeps you warm, you've got nice pockets all around it, a nice high neck as well, uh, this is going to be great in and around the dive site. Uh, a new dive computer is going to be coming, uh, I think, tomorrow it should arrive. This is the Tusa Talis dive computer. Uh, now, this is a very nice understated dive computer. It's not, it's not crazy flashy. Um, but what's good about it is that it's quite customizable. It comes in two standard colors. You get black and you get white. But with both of those, you get, as you see on the right-hand side, you get blue accents and pink accents. So you can customize them, you can take the, uh, the black or the white accents off and you can replace it with a blue or a pink uh, and you can mix and match and you can make it your dive computer. Especially if um, you have a dive computer and your buddy has the same dive computer, you're not going to mix up whose is whose because uh, you can customize it so it's, uh, it's exactly what you want. So this is a two Nitrox mixed dive computer. So uh, it's going to do everything that you're going to need uh, even if you're switching gases underwater. Uh, four button user interface, uh, very, very easy to use, very, very nice and tidy. Uh, the next is also from TUSA, is the, uh, the Liberator Sigma 2 BCD. Now this is the upgraded version of the original Sigma, and uh, this is your tough hard-wearing BCD, jacket style, integrated weights, uh, very, very nice, simple, easy to use jacket, very, very comfortable, but it has unique uh, harness system that sort of holds separate the bladder and your back plate. So that means it can bring your cylinder closer to your body, holds it nice and close and gives you much more control in the water. With some BCDs, they can have too much of a back plate and too much of a bladder, and that actually has to lift the cylinder away from your back that causes it to tip and roll and twist, and, uh, and it just doesn't feel very natural. Whereas when you're diving with this, the cylinder moves with you. It doesn't wobble. It doesn't roll. It, it holds you nice and uh, nice and controlled in the water. Uh, the Scuba Pro Chromis. This is a, a great, this is basically the little brother of the Scuba Pro Mantis, which came out a little bit earlier, uh, about a month or two ago. Um, it's a great little multi-sport dive computer. At its heart, it is a dive computer. Uh, the really great point about this is that they have created a special font that's so clear and really crisp and so easy to see underwater. They have specifically designed that font just for this dive computer. Um, as I said earlier, it is a, a dive computer. It's also multi-sport, so it does have a um, altimeter. It has a swimming count um, sort of stroke counter. So if you're in the gym, you're, uh, you're doing lengths in the pool, you can set your, um, uh, your stroke length and it will count the number of strokes and calculate how far you've swum. Um, you can take it up a mountain and it will work out how high you are uh, and then you can take it scuba diving. Hopefully not all in the same day, but it's, uh, it's a wonderful multi-sport um, computer that you can wear. And right now, until, um, until the end of September, it's at a special price at 245, which is ridiculously cheap for a, uh, this kind of multi-sport dive computer. Have a look at it. It's Scuba Pro, so it's top-notch equipment. Uh, very, very easy to use. Um, and yeah, nice range of colors. You've got some nice bright colors. I like the bright colors. Some people prefer more the subtles, the blacks and the whites. Um, but yeah, have a look at the Chromis. Uh, we're also, ooh, ignore Scuba Fest Anglesey at the top. Uh, we're also doing a special offer on the SIAC uh, iFlex 7mm wetsuit. So 7mm is a great thickness for the UK. Uh, you can dive from a good sort of March to October time in the 7mm. And the iFlex is a wonderful uh, wetsuit. As the name suggests, it's extremely flexible, which makes it very, very easy to get into, move around in, and get out of as well. Right now, uh, you're getting 15% off. Which brings it down to 14195, uh, which is incredible for a full length 7mm wetsuit. Um, you'll normally spend a lot more than that just getting a, uh, a full length 7mm. Um, on the inside, it's got nice thermal fiber, 
So have a look at the, um, the iFlex wetsuit. Uh, the last slide, there's one more, which is um, mentioned it uh, the month before last. We're doing a Facebook uh, giveaway on a CDU, so one of the little DPVs. Um, it actually ends Monday. So click the link below, and, uh, and that will link to our Facebook page. And on there, there'll be a picture which says, win a, uh, win a CDU. So click on that, like that. And, uh, and the winner will be announced on the 4th of next month. So um, that will be on Facebook. Uh, so it's, it's just a free draw. All you need to do is just click like and share, uh, share the picture, and you'll be entered into that prize draw. OK, guys. So and that's the end of the news. Now we're going to move on to a few questions. Bear with me. Right, we've got some new questions. Uh, the first one I'm going to go from uh, Simone. Uh, it may sound like a daft question, but did the Blue O2 boat have masticating toilets? Um, Blue O2, no, they had, I never heard them. Um, I think they're just standard marine toilets. Um, yeah, you just, you have a little valve and that flushes it down. Uh, and, and that's the last you hear of it. Um, interesting. Um, yeah, anybody who's spent much time sort of living below uh, the water table or on boats, you will have seen masticating toilets. Um, no, you do have to treat it like a marine toilet, so no, um, no paper or whatnot. But um, but you do have bidet functions there. Uh, Aviation asks uh, Durham T. Uh, uh, do you have any new Mars BCDs in 2015? Uh, at Euro, not Eurotech. Um, at Scuba Fest, Mares announced the uh, Mares Quantum BCD. Uh, we have them on order. Uh, I don't actually know when they're due to come in. Very, very interesting. They have a new integrated weight system, uh, which has a sort of dual lock function. It's, it's very nice and secure. It's a matter of you put the weight in, and then you have to secure it, and then it, it just holds it in position. But then you just pull on that handle, it comes loose. The really nice part of it is the external pocket is instead of being made out of the sort of standard Cordura material, it's made out of an elasticated material. So even when your BCD is fully inflated, you can still put things in your pocket and it just holds it nice and close to you. Uh, that's a really nice feature. Have a look out for the, um, the Mari's Quantum. Uh, I don't have the details for it yet. Um, I don't even have a picture of it yet. I have a picture of it on a, uh, on a mannequin. Uh, but that's the best that I can do. But um, yeah, have a look for the the Mares Quantum. As soon as it's released, uh, we'll get it on uh, on day one. I'll do my video for it as soon as it, uh, as soon as it comes in, and uh, and we'll do all of our product reviews. Uh, Chris asks, I guess the diving was great, but Blue O2, uh, what was life on Liverboard like? Uh, life on board is uh, is very chilled out. Uh, I flew out by myself. Uh, I've done it quite a few times. And because you're all scuba divers, it's incredibly friendly. Um, we had divers from Scotland, from all over the UK. Some, um, the guy that I was sharing a room with, Otto, he was from, um, uh, he was Danish, but he lived in Greenland. Um, but you all get along. Um, you just, uh, normally the start of the holiday, First night, you stay in port and uh, you have dinner on the boat and you just relax, normally on um, sort of like mid deck, just relaxing, having a drink. Um, soft drinks are free, alcohol, they have a trust system. So when you take a beer, you just mark it on a list uh, and you just relax. Um, life on boat is, it's, it's not a holiday. Um, it kind of is and it isn't. It's a, um, it's a very busy holiday. It's very focused around scuba diving. So you normally, you wake up at about 6, 6.30 in the morning, you go for a dive, then you have breakfast, then you go for another dive, then you have lunch, then you go for another dive. Uh, if the itinerary allows it, you, uh, you have dinner and then you have a night dive. Um, simply the best, uh, you're not allowed to dive on uh, the marine parks out there, so uh, at night, sorry. 
So, um, so we didn't actually do any night dives. So it depends on your itinerary. Sometimes they can squeeze one in, but, um, but it's up to the weather, it's up to the itinerary and where they are in the Red Sea. Um, but um, you can always opt out of dives. If you don't want an early morning, you can just say, no, I don't want an early morning. Uh, you're woken up with your choice of drinks in the morning. Um, it, it's, it, it, it's wonderful. Um, I love liverboards. I've, uh, I used to go on um, sort of shore-based holidays in the Red Sea and liverboard holidays in the Red Sea. I used to do about six a year. And um, shore-based is great because you get the sort of the nightlife and you see lots of different people. But as far as living on a liverboard, it, 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 it is just great. Um, yeah, I, I thoroughly encourage you to go on a liverboard. You, um, depending on the itinerary, you normally have to have about 50 dives under your belt and have to be advanced open water because sometimes some of the dives can be a bit more demanding with a bit more current uh, and sort of rib entry and rib exits. But if you don't want to do the dive, you just say, hey, I don't want to do the dive and you spend um, an hour or two whilst everyone's in the water, you spend that sunbathing um, on a luxury yacht. It's, um, it's really nice. Um, the cabins are air conditioned. Um, they have full multimedia, um, electricity, you name it. They, they're very, very good liverboards um, and they're, they're very well organized. So um, yeah, yeah, they're great, they're great, Chris. Uh, aviation is writing back. Uh, just about to buy my first dry suit. What's the difference between neoprene and trilaminate? Uh, so neoprene dry suits, they use crushed neoprene, uh, which is the same as a wetsuit. Um, I, I used to teach in a neoprene, now I use a membrane. Um, neoprene has its own thermal protection, so you don't need as much of an undersuit. They are heavier and they are more buoyant so you need a bit more lead to help you stay down, but you don't need as thick of an undersuit. So when I was diving in the Arctic in, uh, in February, I didn't need a huge stonking great big um, undersuit. I just had um, a single layer of um, fourth element Arctic undersuit under my neoprene dry suit and hoods and gloves and that was it. Um, trilaminate is just a shell. So you are purely reliant on your undersuit to keep you warm. So if I'm diving in the UK in summer months, I'll just dive in like a shirt like this, jeans, uh, in my neoprene dry suit. If I was to do that in my membrane, I'd get very cold very quickly because it has no thermal capacity. They're much lighter. Uh, they're much easier to repair. Um, it's, uh, it swings and roundabouts. They're both fun. They both do the same thing. One has thermal properties, one doesn't. One's heavy, one's light. It's, uh, it, it's kind of, you have, to, you have to try it and see. Um, most people start off with, uh, with trilaminates um, and then they try neoprene and then it's, uh, I, I dive in both. Um, they're, they're slightly different. Membrane dry suits will, will pinch you a bit more if you're not wearing a thick undersuit. Uh, neoprene doesn't really pinch because it spreads that compression around. Um, yeah, they're both great. Um, yeah, it, it depends sort of on your preference, really. If you've never used one before, it is very hard to, uh, to suggest which way to go. Um, they're both great. Uh, I'm just going to answer one more. Uh, Rob on Facebook asks, what's best, Paddy or Bizak? Great, simple question. Um, so as most of you know, the, um, the two main sort of training agencies in the UK, there's, the, there's hundreds out there, there's SSA, um, SSI, um, NAWI, there's, um, there's lots. The two big, big uh, competitors in the UK are Paddy, which is an American company, the Professional Association of Diving Instructors, uh, they are a very sort of I'm trying to think of a way of saying it. they they're very efficient at what they do. They have courses that you pay for, and you do the course, and then you move on. They're a universal company, so you can do one part with one instructor, one part with another instructor, and 
it, it all works. You don't have to do it all with one instructor at one time. You can do one part in one country, one part in another country, a third part in the third country uh, with three different instructors. It's, it's wonderfully sort of malleable. It's a lifetime qualification uh, and it's recognized worldwide. Second one is, uh, is BZAC, which is more of a club structure. So the training is free, but you do have to pay for yearly club fees. So they take a bit longer to teach you. Um, sometimes it can take up to sort of six months, but they are very, very thorough and they get you to a sufficient level where you can cope even diving in British waters. Um, it's a wonderful structure. I mentioned them earlier. Um, yeah, it's, it, it depends what kind of diving you want to do. Um, BZAC divers tend to be a lot of British divers that go abroad occasionally. BZAC divers tend to be ones that go abroad and then kind of dive in the UK sometimes. It's, um, yeah, they're both training agencies. They're teaching you the same thing, just in slightly different ways. No one is sort of better than the other. Uh, they're just different ways of learning the same thing. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to uh, my second presentation. Uh, this one is on apnea free diving. Um, so apnea is the other sort of side of diving where it all started, really. Um, and the fascination with the underwater realm, um, of course it started off with like your sponge divers and there's your spear fishermen and whatnot. And now it's gotten to a point where it's become recreational and competitive. Um, here at Simply Scuba, we just got some um, sort of, uh, what you call it, free diving equipment. And we're looking to expand our range. So I thought, I'd just kind of see what you guys think about apnea. In this one, I'm just going to talk about sort of apnea in general and some of the equipment just so that you guys can sort of learn a bit more. It's not about sort of using scuba equipment to go um, free diving. There is a lot of specialist equipment. So, um, so there's lots of different disciplines as far as free diving. Uh, it's wonderfully free feeling, and it's a very good way of training your body how to sort of breathe underwater. Free divers tend to have good lung control and tend to use less air when they're on scuba because they're training their body just to relax when they're in the water. Relaxing is a very, very important part of diving. Um, and it's, uh, it gives you some wonderful visuals as well. So as far as uh, disciplines, there are hundreds. Um, these are just the main ones that, uh, that I seem to have come across from No Limits, where you literally, you have a diver attached to a weighted sled who bolts down a line as quick as he can, as far down deep as he can. And then to get back up, he um, pulls on a, a lever that opens up a lift bag uh, that shoots him back up to the surface. So this is going down as quickly and as far down as possible and back up as quickly as possible. Then you get something more like static apnea, which is literally lying face down on the surface, just relaxing, doing as little as possible. And you're just trying to hold your breath as long as possible. Then you get sort of dynamic with fins, dynamic without fins, constant weight, variable weight, speed endurance, which is trying to swim as far as you can, as, um, as quickly as you can. Um, this, uh, this unusual one, I'm going to try and pronounce it, uh, Scandala Petra, which is a two-man freediving team. One goes in the water, one stays on the surface. The one in the water holds onto a stone, uh, which is usually made out of marble, which is attached to a rope. At the other end of the rope is his buddy on the surface. And the whole point is for the diver to go down as deep as he can, and then for the buddy to pull him back up on the rope. Uh, there's one called the cube, which has a, a, a 15 meter square line, 10 meters underwater, that the free diver has to swim down to swim around the square as many times as he can, as I understand it. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it's incredible. There are whole different um, sort of aspects of free diving. Uh, free immersion uh, in the middle there is no fins. You basically pull yourself down the line as far as you can go and then pull yourself back up. It's, uh, it's, it's wonderful to see how much it's 
changed in so many different directions it's gone as well. Now there are two main sort of governing agencies that um, uh, that govern the um, the world record attempts. Uh, there's IDA, uh, which is the Association Internationale pour le Développement de l'Apnée, um, which is just yeah the uh, International Association of uh, Apnea Development. Uh, and then the CMAS, the Confédération Mondiale des Activités Subaquatiques. Uh, sorry about my French accent, uh, but that's basically the World Underwater Federation. Uh, and these guys, these guys basically, they, uh, like Ida, will understand some of those previous um, disciplines, but they won't recognize some of the others. Uh, and CMAS will recognize some of the others, but not some that Ida recognize. So it's it's just sort of two different um, governing agencies that look at free divers and different world record attempts. As far as equipment goes, uh, I've got a couple bits with me, um, just so that you can see me holding them. Uh, the first part is the masks. Now the masks are always very low volume. As you know from your scuba courses, as you descend, any airspace is going to, the volume is going to decrease every every meter you go down. First 10 meters, of course, it's going to half, and then it goes down to a third when you get down to 20, and then so on and so forth. So your mask has to be very, very low volume. So the manufacturers come out with these specific low volume masks, and these bring the lenses much, much closer in. They have very small frames, and um, and they tend to be much, much lighter and smaller. Because the lens is coming closer to you, you actually get a nice wide field of vision. Uh, and as you go down, you don't have to equalize as much. Of course, with free divers, the same as scuba divers, to equalize your mask, you have to use um, air from your lungs that you've got from your cylinders. But when you're free diving, you don't want to be wasting the air in your lungs just to equalize your mask. So they use very, very low volume masks even to the point where in certain um, uh, world record attempts, they don't even wear masks, or they just wear um, masks where they've actually filled most of the masks, except a small, tiny point just for them to see through, um, so that there's a very, very minimal air volume inside that mask. Fins, uh, there are two main styles of fins. There are a couple of others, but these are the most common. Uh, on the right hand side you have the long fins, um, I've got a pair of them with me so you, you'll see in proportion to me they are very very long. Um, I actually use a pair of these when I scuba dive sometimes, if I'm out in the open blue water, they're very good at, uh, at transferring energy. So um, they're much more relaxing when you're in the water. You, um, they're not so easy when you're swimming in and out of wrecks or, uh, or cave systems and whatnot because they're much, much longer. So you have to be a bit more gentle not to kick something or nudge something. But when you're out in the open blue, they feel kind of floppy when you first start using them compared to traditional scuba fins. But the elasticity is transferred through the entire blade and they push you through the water almost effortlessly. One tiny flick really pushes you through the water. The other type are more monofins. So monofins are now using your um, antagonistic muscles, just like sort of marine animals. You're using all of your abs down to your hips, your thighs, and um, and your lower legs. You're using all of them together in like a mermaid kick. So uh, so this is very very effective, um, and uh, a lot of the professionals end up moving on to uh, sort of monofins. Um, they're, they're very, very cool, um, but they do take a bit of practice. Um, yeah, I've got some with me. Uh, I'm going to talk about different blades because the, um, the long fins especially, they have lots of different blades. Uh, some of them are interchangeable. And um, like the ones we have on the screen now, the Motus Fibrex, these are made out of a, uh, a carbon fiber, I think. Uh, yeah, or fiberglass, I can't remember. Um, you then get plastic fins and uh, and other materials. So the sort of fiberglass and carbon fiber fins are much lighter. They give you a good snap through the water, and um, they're very very efficient. 
but they can be more brittle as well. So, um, so you have to be careful. Um, this is more for the open free divers who want the speed and the efficiency. But if you're like a spear fisher, say, if you're in and around the rocks or around surf, they can break quite quickly. So you're going to want to move over to the uh, to the plastic style. Plastic style comes in sort of three different stiffnesses. You get soft, medium, and hard. Hard is for the big divers, uh, big strong guys that go to the gym or go running or cycling every day, every week, um, and they want pure power. The uh, the softer fins are for smaller, slighter divers. Um, they use up less energy, but they're not as efficient. Um, it's uh, it's really for your beginner divers. Look at soft and medium blades. For your more experienced, for your more tougher divers, go for the harder blades. For your really performance fins, you're looking at the fiberglass and the um, carbon fiber fins. Suits. Suits are, uh, are very different when you're free diving. Uh, free divers tend to spend a lot more time in the water than our scuba divers. We tend to jump in for about an hour or so and get out. That's it. Uh, free divers can spend multiple hours on the surface, just breathing, relaxing, and then diving. But um, so you have different suits. The one I've got up here is a, uh, a SEAC Race Flex 400. So this is a two-part suit. You can either, they always come with an, in, well, they don't always, but um, but they usually come with an integrated hood. This is good for keeping you warm. Uh, you haven't got any joins for the water to flush in and flush out. On the inside of the suit, the internal lining is very, very sticky. Um, SEAC have, they call it a, um, a smooth cell material. And it's like having glide skin material all over the inside of the suit. What this does is it traps the water and it stops it moving dead. It just holds it against your skin, lets your body warm it up and keep you warm. A lot of them are two parts. So this one you see here, you have a jacket, uh, which has a beaver tail that comes under your crutch and just holds the jacket over the uh, either high-waisted trouser or the salopet. So you've got a double layer of neoprene over your core so over all of your important internal bodily organs, that's giving it more insulation um, and just keeping you warm because you're spending more time in the water. Uh, this one actually has, you see the, uh, the chest pad just over the sternum. These are the spearfishers. Uh, the spearfishers, when they're loading their guns, the guns are only single shot and they're either sort of pneumatic or slings and they need to pull the sling or the... Um, uh, the spear for the pneumatic uh, guns, but they they normally sort of hold the butt of the gun against their chest and then pull those bungee in to load it. So if you've only got a standard wetsuit, that's going to dig into your sternum and get very uncomfortable. It's also going to wear your wetsuit out. So um, SEAC, SEAC's big with um, spear fishing. They're going to competitions and whatnot. And, um, and yeah, so they've added that uh, abrasion resistant extra padded chest sternum um, pad there just for uh, for added comfort there's another type of suit uh, that i didn't actually have time to find a picture of which is a which really has like glide skin material on the outside and this is to lower resistance in the water so you will see a lot of competitive divers um, if you go on our sister site simply swim you'll see a lot of triathlon suits made out of this material and it just glides through the water. So you have absolutely no resistance or very little resistance um, to reduce the amount of friction as you're going through the water. Weight systems are different for, um, for apnea as well. You do have um, sort of webbing weight belts, except uh, the spearfishers and the free divers, they tend to use rubber. Um, weight belts to thread the um, the lead blocks through. Some of them use a, a, a margalis buckle, which is literally like a belt buckle. Um, much slower to release, but it's much more secure. Uh, the rubber just holds the lead in position. You don't need your, um, your weight retainers. Um, it, it's just another type. We, um, it never really kicked off in the scuba diving industry. We tend to use just nylon webbing, um, but the free divers, they like to use their, uh, their rubber weight belts. 
You also get weight harnesses, and this lifts the weight off your belt around your hips and lifts it up towards your shoulder blades. Uh, a lot of freedivers you'll see actually having um, some necklaces of lead or, uh, or lead shots. And this, because your center of buoyancy tends to be up towards your sternum when you're underwater with a breath, um, so you're very upright in the water. What you want to do is you want to lift some of that lead up towards the top of your body, towards your shoulders, just to give you more of a head down position. Um, the um, the white harness jacket on the on the right hand side here. This is preferred by like spearfishers uh, because that lowers down their shoulders. If they're um, if they're ambushing, they just kind of sit down on the bottom and they wait. Um, otherwise, their top half will be rising up, and it's it's very uncomfortable. But this just gives you a more natural horizontal position in the water. They're still quick release. Um, you just got pinch clips. This one attaches to a belt at the bottom, as you see, but just unclip that and it's away. Then you have computers. Um, so many dive computers, they have free dive modes uh, or apnea modes. It's, uh, it's, it's a very good way of recording how deep you are, how long you've been down for, how long you've been on the surface for, but these computers will have dedicated modes for it. If you just take a, a scuba diving computer, leave it in, uh, in air or nitrox mode, go down to 18 meters and then bounce back up, it's gonna shout at you, it's gonna lock you out, it's gonna give you um, decompression out, uh, obligations. So what the manufacturers do is they embed this new program which is different from gauge mode. Gauge mode will lock you out of other modes if you go diving on it. Um, uh, you can still dive in gauge mode. It's basically, because it's not recording, it just locks you out of every other. Free diving, basically, it normally has a much faster sample rate. So a lot of them, I have my dive computer set to about a 60 second uh, sample rate, because it uses up less uh, battery life and, uh, and I don't need that level of accuracy when I'm scuba diving. When I'm free diving, I want it recording like every second because the change, those 60 seconds, is like my entire dive sometimes. Um, whereas every second you can get down and it will more accurately record your maximum depth and how long you're under the water for. It won't shout at you neither because it's not recording... Um, your decompression obligation. It understands that you're holding your breath, you can go down as quick as you want and you can come up as quick as you want. It's, um, it's not gonna tell you off in war, tell you to do a decompression stop or a safety stop at five meters because uh, it's in free dive mode. Uh, the next most important thing is a buddy. Um, free diving is a, uh, is a buddy sport, the same as scuba diving. There are a lot of unforeseen physiological effects. So, um, like with Natalia earlier, you should always dive with a buddy uh, who can come down and help you, uh, who's watching you uh, at all times. And uh, and yeah, so uh, so that's the basic equipment from free diving. Uh, there is more out there, obviously, um, but these are just a, a sort of quick introduction to the uh, to the usual bits and bobs. And um, so I'm going to go back to some questions. I've got some more questions. Um, <clears throat> there you are. Um, so the first one, oh, let me just wake this up. Uh, uh, okay, so this is from Chris. He asks, I've moved to a backplate and wing kit uh, rather than jacket BCD, and I find I sometimes miss the pockets. Are there any storage solutions that often prefer other, uh, over others? Um, it depends what you want to put in your pockets, Chris. Um, I don't tend to have too much in my pockets. Um, when I'm wearing sort of backplate and wing, uh, I tend to have sort of spare mask and um, an SMB and knives and what's sort in, uh, in my thigh pockets. Uh, you can get pockets like mask pockets. Uh, Hollis do a, a mask pocket. You can find it on our site. And uh, it's just a very simple um, sort of one-way mask pocket. Uh, it depends what you want to put in it. Um, most people, if you're using sort of webbing and, uh, and backplate and wings and whatnot, they're clipping it off onto their harness. Uh, like my SMB will be around behind me. 
uh, my torch tend to uh, my umbilical tend to be up here and um, it tends to be clipped off you don't tend to bring something down unless you're going to be using it uh, if you're not using it it gets clipped off it's um, mm -hmm. yeah simple simple pockets uh, nothing too big anything big just becomes a snag hazard um, yeah I mean have a look at uh, the uh, the apex uh, what are they call tech shorts um, if you're just on um, just diving in a wetsuit or just in shorts or whatnot you can wear these they're just over shorts they have two thigh pockets that sort of velcro down to nothing or you can put stuff in them um, yeah they're very useful uh, or yeah you can just have you normally have um, as I mentioned earlier the Hollis mask pocket just has a, um, a webbing loop which fits over two uh, two inch uh, webbing and uh, you can just put it where you like uh, but most stuff just tends to be clipped off uh, Simone asks another backplate and wing question are there durable weight options other than weight belts available for backplates uh, that do not attach to the webbing uh, so backplate and wings are more for your twin set divers so with twin sets you don't tend to need any weight um, but I tend to like if I'm just diving on a single I like wearing a weight belt um, there are some integrated weight options uh, Hollis again do some integrated weight systems um, you just have grub screws uh, sorry book screws uh, that attach to certain places and just quick release um, as far uh, on top of that uh, no standard traditional weight belt is your quick release mechanism for uh, for lead uh, dumpable not durable yeah that's fine <laughs> Uh, Craig Smith, can you do a free diving course? Uh, yes, I can if you want. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, free diving courses, uh, they're all around the UK. Uh, there's a lot in Cornwall, um, in, the, uh, in the sort of west side of the country. Uh, they have nice water out there. Uh, when I was at, uh, at Scuba Fest, there were a couple free divers up there. Uh, there are free diving courses out there, just, just Google it. Um, it's more... They do a lot more work on the surface, which just teaches you how to breathe, different methods of breathing and relaxing. Relaxing is the real key. Um, and then they get you into the water and they take you down like a 20 meter line. They get you to go down and then come back up and just kind of slowly work your way further and further down. So there are free diving courses out there. Uh, I do highly recommend free diving courses. Um, they, they're the safer way. They, you're there with an instructor like your scuba instructor they're teaching you all the do's and the don'ts. Um, so yeah, it's a very, very good way to, uh, to learn how to free dive, to get into it. It's much, much cheaper than scuba diving. You don't need your regulators and your BCDs and whatnot. Um, yeah, it's just much freer. Uh, whilst I'm on that, I mentioned all the equipment earlier. Uh, so here I've got some free diving fins, uh, try and fit them into the screen. So they're much, much longer than your traditional sort of scuba fins, and they're much more flexible as well. So this is the transfer of the energy. Uh, this is like a, a medium stiffness blade, but, um, but this section, so this will unscrew. On the other side, this comes out, and then all of this section, except these two ribs, actually comes out. And then you can swap this out for a different, uh, different hardness or replace it if you've broken yours. So you've got your foot pocket, <clears throat> Normally they tend to be a bit oversized, so you can wear neoprene socks. So um, so if it doesn't feel quite right, you should be wearing socks. Um, and, um, and yeah, they're just very, very efficient at uh, transferring energy. You just, you just unclip that, swap it out, and you've got a, a new pair of fins. A lot of them are, um, uh, I'm trying to think, different brand compatible. Uh, so you, if you say got a um, a SIAC foot pocket, you can buy a Cressy blade uh, or vice versa and mix and match because um, they're usually um, the uh, the same fitting, the same shape, the same size. So you can kind of mix brands with uh, with a lot of them. The masks themselves, I've got a uh, <clears throat> a micro mask. Uh, this is made by Aqualung. Let me just take the warning sticker off. So these are low profile. If I uh, sort of scrunch that down, you see how small that is against your face. So when most masks will come up to say here, you've got all that air volume that's not being used 
and not shrinking down as you uh, as you go under the water. They're much much smaller, much more compact, um, and they have a much smaller internal volume. Uh, CO2 one, which is the uh, the L70, and I believe the 70 represents the um, it can't be 70 cubic centimeters. It's uh, <clears throat> the 70 relates to the internal volume. It's, it's incredibly tiny. You can scuba dive on one of these. Um, very very simple. Um, exactly the same as a normal mask. You have the double um, double skirt seal. You have articulated hinges. Uh, very very comfortable. Uh, tempered glass and everything. But you don't have to equalize your mask as often, so you're not wasting uh, wasting your bottom gas. <coughs> mm, pardon me. Let me have a drink. Well, yeah. So the um, the equipment is um, is. It's similar, but it's uh, it's specialised for the free divers. Uh, I just got a new message from Stephen. Uh, could you recommend a hold all for my diving kit? Uh, yeah, there's quite a few. Um, Apex came out with a new range of um, hard uh, carry bags. Uh, if you want something a bit more civilised, then uh, have a look at the uh, the Oceanic Roller bag, which has um, the one bit that I really like about it is the uh, the wheels. The wheels are super quiet. Uh, so when you're walking through the uh, the airport and you hear the people uh, walking past, and nah, it's completely silent. It's, uh, it's beautiful. Um, nice big size, really, really tough. Uh, Oceanic actually gave it to their reps that sort of fly around the world and all around the country. They don't really look after their equipment. They throw it about, and it still looks brand new. It's tough as nails. They've got handles, grab handles all over them. Very, very tough, very, very sturdy. Uh, have a look at the Oceanic Roller dry bag. Um, yeah, that one is one that I sort of really sort of recommend. Um, or the Apex ones. The Apex ones were designed for the excursions. So <clears throat> if you're if you go in somewhere where roller bags aren't suitable, you need to carry it. Uh, they do a 75, which has like a backpack feature. It's a dry bag as well with like a roll top. Um, Tough as nails, and uh, and it has a um, well, what do you call it? Almost like a molly system, so you can attach bags onto it. Uh, they also make the twenty five, which is just a small little um, dry sack that's designed to clip onto the side of the um, seventy five, so you can add the volume and you can have different compartments. Very very interesting. <coughs> uh, Chris is back. Uh, I currently dive with the Aqualung Legend Reg set. Uh, I find the first stage very heavy for travel, yes. Uh, can you recommend a lightweight first stage to use uh, with my Aqualung second stage for travel, please? Uh, so with regulators, you have to match uh, your first stage with your second stage, same brand. And uh, as far as CE rating, um, they have to be CE rated. So. If you were to um, to sort of mix and match first stages, one you have to stay <clears throat> stay in your brand, and two you have to stay in your uh, your CE rating. Uh, I have to tell you that. Uh, if you were to mix and match, it's really up to you. Uh, as far as lightweight um, first stages, you've got the uh, the Aqualung Aqualung Micron and the Apex Flight. Uh, Apex and Aqualung are basically the same company, or they're both owned by Aqualung. Um, or Ella Greed. So, um, so yeah, it's the same company, but um, I doubt they would have CE rated the the Micron with the Legend second stage. Um, they might have done. Some manufacturers do it. I know Scuba Pro. They um, they like to CE rate all possible comp um, combinations of first stages and second stages. Uh, I'm not sure about um, about Aqualung. So. Um, Realistically, I mean, I have a heavy set of regulators for the UK, and then I have a light set of regulators for when I travel. Um, yeah, it's um, you're you're really you're saving sort of about half a kilo, um, if that, when you're changing um, first stages. So it's not a great deal um, when you're traveling. I just tend to sacrifice clothes. Um, I prefer having my equipment over clothes, especially on a liverboard. I bring about four pairs of shorts and about four pairs of t-shirt, uh, four t-shirts. That's about it. On top of um, toiletries and whatnot, you uh, you don't need many clothes on the, on a liverboard. Uh, John asks, any reason you can't use free dive masks for scuba? Uh, I like the idea of the wilder field of view. 
Uh, no, absolutely no problem. Um, I actually have one. I've got one of these, a micro mask at home. Uh, mine's black. Um, but um, but yeah, you can use that for um, what you call it, scuba diving. Um, yeah, yeah, they uh, they save your air supply. They um, you've got the full seal. That's the same as any sort of normal scuba diving mask. Uh, yeah, yeah, they are they are fine. It's just some people prefer slightly bigger open feel. You um, when you're wearing it, you can sort of you can see the frame. Uh, which some people don't like, but you do get a, uh, a fairly wide field of vision. Yeah, they, they're fine for scuba diving, no problem with that. Um, yeah, it, it's better for your air supply as well because you're not constantly clearing it when you go down. Uh, Phil Grinus is back. Uh, hi guys, can you recommend a dive knife, something low profile? Um, yeah, um, have a look at... I've, I've tended to go away from physical dive knives with a handle and then a blade that comes out. I tend to move for cutting hooks. I have a look at something like the Trilobite. Um, nice little cutting hook, uh, has replaceable blades. Different mounting options, you could either mount it on your, um, like a watch strap or a webbing strap. You just pull it out, cut what you need to and put it back. Very, very efficient, you're not gonna stab Oh, pardon me. Uh, you're not going to stab yourself. You're not going to cut yourself because it's all sort of guarded. So you're only going to be cutting webbing or line. Uh, or if you do want a, a nice, neat little knife, have a look at something like the Aqualung Squeeze Knife. Um, that's nice, small, compact. Uh, it comes with a blunt blade. You've got a straight edge and then a serrated blade and a, a very clever release mechanism. Uh, you, you just kind of squeeze the handle and it releases, opposed to some where you have to push a button, pull it out, lift it up, pull it out. It is a bit fiddly. You just, with the squeeze, just push it in and click. Um, much simpler. Um, but I'd recommend looking at titanium. Um, I've had steel knives before, and, uh, and I've forgotten to wash steel knives before, and they go rusty really, really quick. Uh, there are different grades of metal, uh, especially steel. So um, if you do end up going with steel, go for a higher grade. Um, but I, I tend to use uh, titanium more than anything. It's, uh, it doesn't rust. It's much lighter. Uh, it holds an edge really well. Um, yeah, yeah, the world is your oyster. Um, I, I prefer smaller, neat little knives. Uh, I very, very rarely need to use a knife. Um, uh, I always used to say I, I've always carried a knife I ever, you know, ever used it once, and that was to sharpen a pencil underwater when I was doing marine conservation work. Uh, but now I just tend to use a, a cutting hook. Um, <clears throat> and Phil also asks another question Do you use free dive mode on the dive computer when snorkeling? Yes. Yeah, uh, on Facebook, he asked. Um, yeah, I, um, I use a snorkel uh, just to breathe, just to look and sort of plan where I'm diving. Snorkel comes out as I take my last breath and then swim down. Um, yeah, free diving. It's um, free dive mode. When you're on the surface, it can get annoying if you're just sort of basic snorkeling, because when you go below, I think it's about half a meter, which is almost about your arm length, um, it counts that as a dive. And then every time you put your arm down, it counts that as another dive. So you come out of the water and you've done like 65 dives and it just looks a bit weird, but they're all like half a meter deep. Um, so if I'm just snorkeling, I just tend to turn my computer off. Uh, if I'm in the pool, I just turn it off. Um, but if I'm trying, if I'm swimming down deep and trying to record where I go, then I'll leave it on free dive mode. Okay, so that's all the questions I've got this month. Um, always good to see you guys. Um, Remember to tune in next month. It will, uh, it's usually the last Thursday of every month. Uh, hopefully, I can have a lot more happier stories. Uh, any questions you've got, use the hashtag Scuba Live on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, on all of our social media channels. Uh, anything you want me to talk about, give me a shout. Just let me know. Uh, email into customer services. They can always forward it on to me. Uh, as always, safe diving out there, and, uh, and good evening. <laughs>